Hi guys, Tracy here with another layout today. Uh, this one uses two photos that are 2.8 by 2.8. I cut them, I print them that size so that they will fit on a single 4 by 6 piece of paper. My printer, you can put two 3 by 3s on it, but it's just really difficult. It takes extra steps, so I don't usually print 3 by 3s unless if I'm printing them on separate papers. Now I really, really want to use this chevron paper, uh, which I really jumps out at me in this kit as one of the most beautiful papers, and it's just really unique. I like how the chevrons are going back and forth instead of all going the same way. And so... I'm just having a look at gathering some some supplies from the It's My Life kit that I think might uh, look good with those chevrons. And so I have that striped piece of paper, I have that Ellie's Studio index card, and I have this piece of stone or, or very, very, very light gray colored um, basil cardstock. I think it's called a fig swirly fig or something like that. So I've decided I'm going to cut apart these uh, these chevrons and I'm going to cut out some of the white space that's between them. So I'm cutting them a little bit closer together than, uh, than what they are on the piece of paper. And I had to turn off my uh, video lights in order to do this just because I need to see exactly where I'm cutting. And the studio lights bright, shine so brightly from above that I can't see the light shining from underneath. They outshine the uh, LED that's in the, the trimmer. So I purposely left a piece of that paper because I really like the back side of it and it picks up on one of the teal colors that's in the chevrons than one of the ones that I did cut. So I'm just tearing myself a piece of that paper that's going to act as a mat for this layout. And now I'm positioning these chevrons so that they are um, going to run vertically along the center part of the layout. And I'm cutting them at all different lengths. And this is going to add a fairly bold element to this layout because these chevrons are quite bold with the bright colors on the white backgrounds and they stand out from the background paper because the background paper is not white it's a gray color so uh, i really like how that gray allows the white on these cutout chevrons to really pop so this is quite a bold element to be uh, using for a background and so for that reason this layout is going to be fairly simple. It's not going to have a whole lot of uh, layers and embellishments in it just so that I, I really don't want anything to take away from these chevrons. I want them to be the main event on this layout. So. I'm just using a tiny bit of glue to adhere these down because I do plan to use um, my sewing machine and run some black thread along the center parts of these chevrons. Oh, I love how that looks. I really, I love that paper so much. Um, yeah, so really, really pleased that I got a chance to use this paper and I can't believe it took me this long because this is about my fifth or sixth, I don't know, layout with this kit. So I'm just running a plain straight black stitch down the center and when I'm when I'm stitching with black thread I do like to have my bobbin be black too and that just um, helps and the same with with when I'm using a light color I used to I like to use a light colored bobbin thread and that's just in case my thread tension gets off and some of the little loops from the bottom show through I want them to be black they don't have to be exactly the same color um, but when I'm using dark thread I use a dark bobbin. when I'm using dark thread I use a dark bobbin and when I'm using light thread I use a light bobbin but they don't have to be exactly the same so I'm just sewing straight down and I'm going to trim the thread strings pretty closely, like the little extra strands. So here's the last one. I love how even though those chevrons are exactly the same, they look like they go from wide to narrow and that's just because it, it alternates between them. It's like a trick that your brain plays on your, on your eyes. Um, and I really, really love it. It's, I think it's really cool. 
So now that all of those are sewn together, I'm just going to reassemble everything. And But before, before I start to attach things, I want to pull up the tops and bottoms of these chevrons. Uh, so here I am doing the top and now I'm going to do the same with the bottom bottoms. Before I finish this layout I'm going to put some dimensional adhesive under all of those so that when I put it in my album they don't sit down under the pressure of the other pages. So I want an embellishment to cover up some of that uh, distracting part on the Ellie Studio uh, just part of the design that I'm not incorporating. So this is on grid paper so it should be easy enough to line up your your photos but for some reason I had a little bit of trouble with that. <laughs> but I eventually got them fairly straight. Now I'm gonna just center that strip on the index card and add the uh, heart this photo and then I saw this one that says say cheese and I thought that's perfect for a pizza layout so I'm going to use both of them. Putting that one right there and I'm just going to position it so that it perfectly hides the just the colored elements of that design. I'm going to let the faux stitching show through. It kind of coordinates with the stitching I already have on the layout. Then I added the say cheese down at the at the other corner kind of on opposite corners of my uh, photos and now that paper is just too busy I'm not going to use that paper at all. The chevron paper by the way is is from Basil Basics and now I want to put my title down here I want this layout to be super duper simple I have a bit of journaling but I'm thinking about how am I going to incorporate some journaling on this layout because I really want it to be quite simple and have the chevrons be the main element and I don't want anything that's going to take away from the journaling I'm thinking at this point that I might do some sideways journaling along one of the chevrons but I can't quite decide which so I'm going to think about that and uh, go through and look at some ways that I can add my title down here. So I took out some embellishments just in case I want to embellish around um, around the, uh, the, the title but first I'm going to just get all the letters put on this piece of wax paper so I can play around with the placement of it. So now these are more letter stickers that came in the kit. I think every single thing on this layout came from the kit and it's the It's My Life kit. I'm not sure if I said that at the beginning. And it's from Scraptastic. And so the title of this is going to be Picto County Pizza. And at this time, at this point, I'm thinking I might put county like CO and then a period, but I kind of think that that kind of loses the loses the sense of the word so I'm gonna go ahead and spell out Picto County in full uh, and I gotta cut these two apart so I can play around with how I'm gonna place them and that uh, that Ellie Studio little tag that goes underneath makes a perfect place for the word pizza to live and uh, I'm gonna start to place the letters right now so I'm placing them because I know that I'm going to be cutting off some of the edge of that one. It's going to hang over a little bit. It's not actually attached to the cardstock yet. And so I want to make sure I have enough room for the Y to hang down a little bit beside the A and also have room to cut off part of the tag. So again, I'm not having these letters stand on top of the gray uh, line. I am having them overlap a teensy weensy bit with the gray line. I just like that look a little bit better. You can line them up on top of it. Uh, it's just a different look. It's a very subtle difference, but I like to have things looking like they're a little bit overlapping instead of all kind of placed far apart, like with space between them. So there I just finally glued down that. It became apparent that I would have to glue it down in order for these uh, letter stickers to be able to stick properly. So, and here I'm using one of the grid lines to guide my placement of the letters in the word county. And then uh, in order for me to have enough room for Picto to fit on this little card, I had to scooch them all over a little tiny bit. So they're a bit more squished than I'd like them to be, but that's okay. I love that, oh, that U is just perfectly, I don't know, I like how it's kind of angled over to the side there and it just, I just love that U. <laughs> Uh, and then the P, that's actually a lowercase p, but I'm positioning it as if it were an uppercase 
P. Ideally, the C would be capital too, but this font doesn't come with uh, with capital letters. It just comes with lowercase. So sorry, I forgot to zoom out here. I think I'm going to realize it in a minute. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm just taking the other red tile letters and I'm going to spell out the words homemade. I decided at the last minute that uh, this, if I, if I, um, here's my thoughts. I thought if I put homemade, then I'm telling part of the story in the title and then I will have less journaling to do because again, I have that dilemma about where my journaling is going to go in a way that's not going to uh, throw off the design of this layout, which I really like the overall look of this layout as it is. So I don't really want to add another element. So I'm still trying to think about how am I going to add my journaling without throwing something off. There's that blank space in front of the P in pizza, and so I took this this orange uh, arrow from October afternoon that came in the kit, and I just added a little enamel dot. I thought about adding enamel dots in a couple of other places on this layout, but I've decided to just leave it at that. The, kind of the title becomes the main part of this, besides the uh, besides the photos, which are kind of nicely framed by those really cool chevrons. <clears throat> so I just put some uh, adhesive uh, foam dots above them, uh, around the places that I want this to have a bit of lift and then I just used my ATG on the rest of it so that it can sit flat. And I only pulled up those chevrons in the few places uh, like on the tops and on the bottoms so that uh, it would f they would lie flat for where my photo was going to go. Now I'm just taking the tiny little uh, squares from these adhesive foam pieces that uh, came in the kit and uh, I'm just putting them on either side at the top and at the bottom of each chevron and I'm just poking them in so that they're completely hidden so they're not sticking out at all and I'm not bothering to uh, use the adhesive part of them so I'm not removing the adhesive backing I'm just leaving them there they're more to hold space than they are to hold anything to anything else because these chevrons are already sewn down they're not going anywhere. So now I decided I might want to use this journaling card to write the rest of my story. Basically I want to say that Scott found this recipe for Pictou County pizza sauce which is the special brown sauce which is world famous. People when they move away from Pictou they like get people to send pizza via courier all across the country to get to them and it's like a really big deal for people who are from Picto. I'm not from Picto. I like the pizza fine but I'm not like I wouldn't send to have it sent across the country for me or anything um, but Scott really loves it and every time we go to Picto we have to get pizza so he found this recipe for pizza sauce and uh, the recipe unbeknownst to him the recipe made like 7.6 liters of sauce <laughs> and of course you only need a ladle full for each pizza so we uh, he froze it and um, in small batches and uh, now we have like enough for two pizzas frozen in the freezer in batches and uh, but we have enough for like dozens and dozens of pizzas so <laughs> I'm just putting a little pull tab on this piece of journaling uh, on this journaling card so I just wrote pull and drew an arrow I'm going to use a zigzag stitch here to just uh, add a bit of thread black thread to the top it just kind of, I didn't want this to look so much like it doesn't belong. I'm using my glossy accents here instead of back stitching. I'm just using it to keep the thread from falling out. So I'd need to let it dry. So I'm going to leave that upside down for a few minutes. And I'm going to make a little pocket for this piece of journaling to go into. And I was going to outline to show where my, my thing goes, but I'm just going to leave it there and use it to keep space. Thing meaning journaling card. <laughs> So I'm using this terrifically tacky tape or red line tape and it is very very sticky. It doesn't go anywhere. It's one of the most permanent reliable um, types of adhesive that you can use for when something is going to be used a lot. And so I don't want this to uh, fall off when people move my journaling in and out of the pocket. So in order to make this work, you have to burnish it. So I just ran my finger my fingernails along each of those lines, and now I'm taking off the orange strips that, and now it's 
stuck to the layout forever and ever. <laughs> And so uh, that journaling is just going to stick up. It's going to stick up past all of my other pages, and it might be the only one in this scrapbook that has that. I, every once in a while when I do hidden journaling, I like to make it be like a tab at the top like this. The reason being is that that way you can look at the, at the uh, journaling and pull it out, and uh, you don't have to actually um, take the layout out of its page protector. So you see how that works now, it just kind of pulls out, you can read it, and then you just stick it back in when you're done and it stays poking out like that as a part of the layout. And that will not be in the page protector, it will stick out above at the top. I have several layouts that do that, but I don't think there's another one in this, in this particular album yet. So there's those really cool chevrons that stick up off the page. I really love that and I love how the title came out for this one. It was a really fun uh, layout to do. It came together super fast and every single part of it was fun. There was nothing that I hated doing on it and that's always nice on a layout. You know that you don't have to spend time doing something that you don't necessarily like just to make it look nice. Um, and so I'm just going to add a tiny bit more stitching here. I'll speed this up for you. So there we go. I'm just going to add some straight stitches there and I'm going to have a problem with my sewing machine. When I go to make the second line, I didn't make sure that the thread was in the right place, so it unthreaded itself as it went. So I'm just going to thread it back together again, thread that needle, um, and then just put the second line on and then you'll get to see some close-ups. And what this does is it just adds a little bit of that black thread to all three components of this layout. So I've got thread down here by my title, I've got thread up in the top by my uh, journaling strip, journaling card, and then I have thread all around the middle part of course. So here are the close-ups and there are some photos as well. So I hope everybody has a really great scrappy week and uh, those of us who are Scraptastic members, we should be looking forward to getting our new April kits fairly soon. I can't wait to get mine. Take care everybody.